Well, hello, my YouTube fellas and gals. So, if you're new to my channel, my name's Tammy. I need to use bookstore. And if you're interested in any of the books that I show, you contact me at Tammy's Makeup Treats at gmail.com or Mendes Bookstore and more on Facebook. Everything will be in the description below. If you don't want to order books off of me, but you read a Kindle or a Nook or another gadget, you can use my resource center me as a resource center to find it on those gadgets. I list the name and the author below. I try to do 10 books per video. I'm on lot three and we're doing the religious books this month. And these ones happen to be all bigger softbacks and they are $2 each. So let's begin with book number one. Then I also ship media mail if you buy for me and I have a special order pick up through my Etsy store and you can go get it. So the first one is called Producing the Sacred, an Essay on Public Religion by Robert Withnow. This is a 1994 copyright. And this is what it's about. What is public religion? How does it manifest the sacred? These are the fundamental questions Robert Withnow addresses in Producing the Sacred, the first volume in a series of public expressions of religion in America. With now uses a guiding assumption, the idea that culture expressions, religious or otherwise, do not simply happen but are produced. He considers the major kinds of organizations that produce public religion, congregations, hierarchies, special interests, academies, and public rituals, showing how these organizational vehicles shape public religion's message and how specific types of religious organizations draw resources from their environments. He also reveals the implicit and unintended ways in which sacredness is expressed in modern society. Subsequent volumes in this series will address the role of religion in public discourse, in the mass media, in literature, in music, and in art. So this is book number one. Book number two it's called The Power for a Living, and I think I do have more than one copy of this. This is by Jamie Buckingham. It is a 1998 copyright, and this is, there's no synopsis to this, so this is just the contents. It's reaching your goal, you're special to God, how to get right with God, how to keep on growing, what the Bible is all about, making the Bible a part of your life, summing it up for further reading. And that is the contents. So there you go. Book number two. Book number three, we have The Green Letters, Principles of Spiritual Growth by Miles J. Stanford. This is a 1975 copyright, and this is what this book is about. It's got some scratches on the back. Looks like sticker marks. As the first in a series of five on Christian life, the Green Letters emphasizes both the doctrinal and ex experimental aspects of maturing in Christian living. This book is grounded in scripture and enlivened by quotations from noted authors. Number one, but Christ is its theme. The author makes an arresting statement regarding the dynamics of the Christian life. God doesn't intend to help us live the Christian life and maturely considers the Lord Jesus a helper. Maturity shows him to be life itself. Perhaps the greatest drama in the world is slow and subtle growth of the character of the Christian beauty of character can be developed only through years of reflection and experience. And the word of God is the life of Christ and increasingly lived by faith. The Christian life is a healthy, robust kind of life. It advances also through trials from one who has faith. Something is not wasted but becomes means for increasing something vigor and strength. It's kind of cut off. So I didn't get to read the whole back, but that's number three. It sounds interesting. Number four... We have the New English Bible, New Testament, the complete text with footnotes. This is a 1961 copyright. It's definitely been well-loved. 
and this is what it says. The publication of the New English Bible New Testament in March of 1961 was a memorable event. Within a few hours of its appearance in bookstores, in its first cloth-bound edition, it became a bestseller and was immediately acclaimed by scholars, by clergymen, and laymen of a wide variety of denominations. Now the New English Bible is made available in a low-priced paper-bound edition that contains not only the complex text, but also full notes. This authoritative version of the New Testament in modern English is entirely a new translation from the original Greek. It was made in the direction of the leading Protestant churches in the British Isles by a group of outstanding Bible and literary scholars who spent 13 years carrying out their task. The New English Bible is not an expression of any denominational or doctrinal leaning. It is offered simply as the Bible to all those who will use it in reading, teaching, or worship. Readers and students, especially young people who seek to understand the Bible and who have been puzzled by difficult passages in earlier versions, have already found the New English Bible clear and compelling. So there you go. This is the Oxford University Press and came. Cambridge University Press it was published by. It's very interesting. So that is book four. Book number five, we have Burden of Truth by Charles Colson with Ann Morris, Defending Truth in the Age of Unbelief. This is a 1997 copyright. This is what the book is about. The lesson for me, you and me, is to look behind the headlines, which often treat only the political and economic dimensions of current events. Scripture teaches that the most fundamental dimension to human life is religious. As a nation believes in its heart, so is its destiny. So that's what you get with the burden of truth. We have War of the World Views, Whose Law Is It Anyway, The Classroom, Cacophony, Modern Myth Makers, Discerning Distortions, Crime and Culture, The Ferment Proclaims His Handiwork, What Are art Artists Up To Now, Reviving the Virtues, Challenges for the Church. This sounds like a good reading too. So that is book number five. Book number six, we have In His Steps by Charles Sheldon. This is a 1998 copyright, and this is what this is about. More than 15 million readers has been inspired by this beloved story of a small town church whose members begin to ask, what would Jesus do? Their commitment leads them through difficulties, conflicts, and sacrifices, and into the indescribable peace and joy. Now, in his steps is ready for Christians facing the challenges of a new millennium. In this edition, the classic by Charles Sheldon is refreshingly updated in clear modern English. The original story shines through the sparkling undimmed power. Whether you've been a follower of Jesus Christ for 50 years or just beginning a spiritual awakening to better understand who Jesus is, in his steps will show you the incredible joy you can find and know in serving him step by step. So there you go, book six. Book number seven, we have Moving On, Moving Forward. This is a guide for pastors in, in transition. This is a 2007 copyright. Tens of thousands of pastors and church staff members set out on a journey into unexplored territory, facing career transitions to a new position. Could you be one of them? Whether you're searching for your first position fresh out of school or a seasoned veteran wrestling with if, when, and how to move on, moving on, moving forward will help you navigate the ins and outs of the ministry employment maze. Based on research with a cross-section of hundreds of pastors who themselves have gone through transitions in ministry, this book uniquely addresses the needs of people for whom the career is a spiritual calling. It deals with the crucial and sometimes painful emotional and family issues involved in leaving a church position. And it is immensely practical and informed by many real life examples. Topics covered here include dealing with search committees, writing a letter of resignation, preparing a resume, networking, negotiating compensation, getting settled in a new community, and many more. 
So there you go. If you're studying to be a pastor, this looks like a good one for if you're thinking about it. That's number seven. Book number eight, we have Living Liturgy Elementary Reflections by Sophia Cavaletti. This is a 1972 copyright, and this is what the book is about. It's got a little ink mark right there, a little sticker mark down there. <laughs> For many years, Sophia Cavaletti has worked to form young children in the mystery of faith. In doing so, she has learned that young children respond with great joy to the most essential elements of faith, living Liter I think it's liturgy, is a book to help adults who catch eyes children understand for themselves the deepest, most essential aspects of litur liturgy. Cavaletti presents brief reflections on how many elementary, by which she means core themes, in the hopes they might increase conscience and active participation in the liturgy and serve a, as a springboard for further study. This is translated translated from Italian. Looks like a good book. So there is seven. I mean eight. Book number nine. This is Jazz Off Key Blog on Faith Girls. And this is a 1984 by Dandy Daly Mackle, and this is what this book is about. When Jazz gets her big break, her own one-woman art show, she's ecstatic, but when Kendra, her special needs sister, unintentionally ruins the paintings by adding colors to make them happier, Jazz loses it, and her rage just keeps growing. Will she ever learn to manage her background? I mean, her anger. Manage her anger. Discover a world where girls come together from completely different backgrounds and beliefs start a journey of faith and self-discovery. So this looks like an interesting book. Like for teens, maybe? Sounds very interesting. Yeah, because it says for kids down there. So that sounds like an interesting book. And last but not least is another Faith Girls book, Blog, Blog on Storm Morning by Dandy Daly Mackle. This is also a 1984 book, and this is what it says. Storm Warning. Storm Novello was sure that once she became a Christian, she'd be well perfect, but she's not. She can't even manage to be civil to the arrogant Cameron Worthington, the third at school. What's more, her dad is suffering from depression, and her mistakes only seem to make matters worse. Will she be able to make him proud of her? So this looks like a collection of seven books is what it looks like and uh at zondervan.com z-o-n-d-e-r-v-a-n.com so if a person's interested in the set you can go look it up these are $6.99 each new i have them for two dollars each so that is book number 10 so, whatever time zone you're in, I hope you're having a great one. Please leave me a comment. Come talk to me. And I do go live on Wednesday nights, 9 p.m. Eastern Time. And until then, stay blessed. And I will see you soon. Bye.